Continuing on with our Survivor Series 2015 predictions, we've got to talk about one of the primary matches of the night. Undertaker and Kane, the Brothers of Destruction, will face off against two members of the Wyatt family, and now we know from the SmackDown tapings, those are going to be the two that I guess we were kind of all expecting, Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman. First off, was anybody expecting anybody else? I could have seen it being Strowman and Harper with Bray Wyatt just being on the outside. Yeah, I would... I thought there's a chance that Bray wouldn't have been involved so they could stress the feud out. So this makes me think they're actually going to have some finality to it, at least. What does Harper and Rowan do? I guess uh, they just get involved in the match at some point. I mean, there might be actually a thing before the match. Maybe they, like, try to all four of them jump Brothers of Destruction and something happens, I don't know. But I gotta say, honestly, I'm really underwhelmed about this. I'm very underwhelmed that Braun Strowman's in the match. I think he's got potential to be a fun opponent for somebody to knock off, but he's not there yet. Yeah, he's going to hurt the match quality itself, but even when it comes to just the booking and the match, like, as it's advertised, they really dropped the ball when it comes to Brothers of Destruction against two members of the Wyatt family. There's two other ones. Just add two more people. Make it four on four. Should have been Team Taker versus Team uh, Wyatt. This is meant to yeah. be about 25 years of The Undertaker. He debuted in a Survivor Series match. It only makes sense for him to celebrate it by doing a Survivor Series match. Now, yep. I'll admit, maybe one of the reasons why they didn't do this is because they didn't have some of the people that they would have thrown into the match. Because uh, Randy Orton had gotten attacked by the Wyatt family. Maybe he would have been involved. If Sting was available, maybe he would have been involved. But shit, you've got Finn Balor. And even when it comes to, like, the Dudley Boys. Could have had Brothers of Destruction and the Dudley Boys against the four members of the Y family. I'd have been down with that. Yeah, especially if um, Strowman got put through a fucking table. That would be sweet. Yeah, I mean, that could be one of the re reasons why he's taken out of the match. Can, can this just be also blamed on our own expectations? A little bit, but I think any kind of blame that would be put on our expectations, that's kind of WWE's fault, too. Because they're, they're booking this pay-per-view as 25 years of The Undertaker. Yeah, this show's meant to be so, like, pretty much... It, the promotion is all Undertaker right now, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you're getting very little Undertaker on the show, or at least very little of what you'd expect. Well, here's what I don't get. If they're going to make it all about Undertaker, then why isn't this a singles match? Right. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree if they should be doing it that way, but... Or the even, like, some kind of a gimmick. Like... Why not make okay. it Brothers of Destruction? You know what would have been okay. an interesting gimmick? A Survivor Series match. <laughs> well, no. Okay. So here comes to how I think they could save this. You, you think that there isn't enough cool going on here. They could save this if they go really fucking hokey. And I mean, like, they bring out the fire, they bring out the lightning, they bring out the druids. Like, they, they do, like, a, a best hits of the fucking Undertaker. They get a fucking casket out there. There's a fucking urn with a light shining out of it. They they need to have like everything awesome about the Undertaker and right Kane on the pole. and like everything and this could be cool and a lot of fun. I was expecting you to say Summer Rae wins and goes with Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> if they do that kind of stuff, that's still kind of cool. But at the same time, still gonna watch the match. Like, it, well, yeah. I mean, no matter what, I'm gonna be watching this, even if it's like a grown. No, I'm saying even if they do all that cool shit, I'm still gonna watch the match and then deal with fucking Braun Strowman. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just, I think this is one of those situations where, yeah, if you would have told me without me watching Monday Night Raw that Undertaker and Kane were going to fight the Wyatt family, I'd have been like, oh, that's pretty sweet. But watching this build up, I'm not really that into it. And what I'd build still... up? I'd be a little more willing to accept it was our own expectations if I couldn't think of, like, like if everyone couldn't think of better ideas. I've heard plenty of suggestions where I'm like, yeah, that makes more sense. Well, another one of the problems that I have specifically with the build for this is how did they get out of whatever captivity they were in? Yeah, and how did they... What's up with them losing their powers? Apparently they didn't. Yeah, like, this really was just... We need to have this kind of thing. It'd be cool if we did power stuff and... Uh, a couple question marks, profit. <laughs> like, you could have... I mean, of course, I have to preface this by saying I don't think... Sting is available to wrestle, but... Pretty how sure cool Seth would, killed him. How cool would it have been, though, if, like, 
Bray Wyatt and the three others were they cut that promo where they were saying that you know like I'm the new face of fear I've got all the powers and all that they did the whole like kind of thing with the uh, lightning and stuff and there's still no Undertaker and there's no Kane how awesome would it have been if the next week he's cutting some promo about like you know now that that's out of the way my new reign of terror is going to start and whatever and Sting comes out with the Undertaker and Kane and he's like I freed those fuckers because I'm the vigilante that always kinds to you know show up and save the day sort of a thing and the three of us and whoever the other person would be, Finn Balor, I guess, are going to go fuck you up. And that's why they were able to get out of it. Sting's, you know, got that little bit of the supernatural thing going on. That would at least give them a reason to have, like, that they got out of their captivity if they were kidnapped or whatever. That's how they got their powers back from Sting. It's kind of ridiculous to be talking about this with a wrestling thing, but, you know, you don't give me um, a story about Superman losing his powers and... 20 minutes later, he's starting to fly. Yeah, even if he was not in was the ring, competition shape. Yeah. <laughs> even if he's not in competition shape right now, having Sting out there just as, you know, cutting that promo like that, that would have been great. That would have been, that would have added so much more to this feud. You know, it would have kept up that supernatural element, like you were saying, and it would have gotten me more interested in the story. I think what the problem is right now is that the writers, I think what they do is they bring in brand new writers every week and they don't allow them to watch the last month of shows. So they're just <laughs> making it up brand new, a new fresh team every single time. At least that's what it seems like. Because it's like, oh, this is going to be the match at the pay-per-view. How do you sell it? And it's just different. It's I was going to say the same old shit week in, week out, but it's like completely different shit every week. It's like they don't reference what they previously did, like stealing the powers and then all of a sudden they're there. How did they get out? They have to ex have some kind of continuity in order to get people strung along and interested. The biggest issue is that the best segment I've seen of The Undertaker during this um, Survivor Series build was him tombstoning a fucking turkey. <laughs> That's true. That's and that so wasn't even weird. on Raw. Yeah, I know. It was like the best thing he's done all month. And it was really fucking good, too. So Jimmy Fallon's segment. writers need to start working for WWE. I guess. And you know what? That actually got Brad Maddox back into the swing of things. He's uh, Yeah, I love though event. that everybody goes, a man playing a turkey. He got no name recognition for that. <laughs> so, do we all agree Undertaker and Kane have to win this? Have to? No, mm. they don't have to. I do it just because it's a celebration of the career, but at the same time, this is the issue with Bray Wyatt losing all these matches to The Undertaker. Like, Can we really have him lose to him again? I mean, He's the biggest comparison that Bray gets is being a modern day Undertaker. Do you want to make him look second in Bray? I wouldn't. I mean, no one's forcing the Undertaker and Kane to win this match, so you never know. I, don't know. I kind of think if you don't have them win it, then they're going to do another one of those things where they just drop the story and go to another thing, and I'm tired of that. I wouldn't mind the Undertaker and Kane winning if it meant Bray Wyatt's going to knock the Undertaker off next month or something. That's what I was going to say. Are they just going to stretch this out to, to another storyline? Are they just going to kind of water it down and have Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt again, another one that they've already done? I mean, what are they leading to after this? I don't know. See, I'm thinking they're not leading anywhere. That's why they need to just end. Because yeah, they can't do a TLC match. Taker's not wrestling a TLC match. If there's no grand scheme that they have in mind, then they just need to end it at this pay-per-view. And Undertaker and Kane need to go over. There's also the scenario where they might set Undertaker's WrestleMania opponent. Someone could interfere that we're not thinking of. Hmm. That's True. tough, too, because, I mean, with these injuries and stuff, like, who is there left for Undertaker to fight? John Cena's the only person I can think of. Other than Sting. But... I mean, um, they could do that, too. Like, they always have some kind of a run-in thing where maybe, like... Brothers of Destruction are up against those two Wyatt family members. The referee gets, I don't know, electrocuted through some kind of portal or whatever the hell you're doing. And uh, it starts to become four on two, and then somebody makes their run in. Finn Balor. I was about to say the same thing. That's so that would be pretty wild, actually. Yeah, it would be interesting. Just for the entrances alone, it'd be awesome. Oh, man, the lights go out, and it does that... 
knowing WWE instead of doing that or Sting or whatever, we're gonna be like fucking Randy Orton. The Bone Street <laughs> crew come out to help him. Yo, Bo what Dallas. If, what if it was Stone Cold? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. No, really. What if it was Stone Cold? I would shit my pants. I would be like, oh man, this surprise is so great. It's a shame that build for this sucked. <laughs> it still wouldn't make what came before it good. You'd, yeah, yeah, you'd fucking find a way to hate on a Stone Cold segment, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'm not expecting things to be too crazy, but I mean, there's potential. There's potential for it to suck. It could be good. You know, I don't know. But I'm going Undertaker and Kane here. I think that in the end, this is just going to be a situation where the Wyatt family is getting a uh, four on two up on them and then they fight back and they win. I'm not really, I think that the, the Seth Rollins injury fucked this pay-per-view five ways to Sunday. So I'm going brothers of destruction. Peyton, what do you think is going to end up happening here? Who's winning? Uh, yeah, it's going to be brothers of destruction, Undertaker and Kane posing in the ring at the end. And yay, that's all. Way go. I'm going with The Undertaker and Kane. There's chances that they might build something for Mania, but I doubt it. Drew? Brothers of Destruction, and not the terrible Jeff impression. Kalen? I'm going with Undertaker and Kane, and I have to add that I'm so disappointed that they let them meet in the ring. Undertaker and Kane already took out all four of them. Yeah, that's another thing that sucks about this. Like, so they God, fucking, yeah. like, I don't know. There's no anticipation now. We already saw that they can take out all four of them, just the two. So so already seeing them take out four of them, wow, now they only have to face two of them. Like, but they caught them by surprise. No one knew that they were going to come out. They didn't have a game plan for... They still had a four on two out. fucking advantage, and, like, Braun Strowman's at least three men. <laughs> He's three men. <laughs> He's a three-man band. <laughs> So I'm going with Taker and Kane. Well, that makes five of us then. Tell us what you think is going to happen in the comments below. We're going to continue on here with the Divas title match, Paige and Charlotte, uh. in part three.